6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines The Prime Minister has directed the Pakistan Agricultural Search and Storage Corporation and provincial food departments to directly purchase wheat from farmers to ensure benefit to them. The planning minister has rejected any notion regarding constitutional and democratic crisis in the country. Kyrgyzstan has expressed keen desire to fully exploit the existing trade and economic potential with Pakistan. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the occupation troops continue to harass the people by carrying out house raids in all towns ahead of the G20 event. In Sudan, intense deadly battle continues between the rival military factions in the capital Khartoum, shattering the ceasefire. The United Nations Security Council has reiterated its continued support for all efforts to formulate a political solution to the Yemeni crisis. And now the news in detail. The Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif has asked the Pakistan Agriculture Storage and Services Corporation and provincial food departments to directly purchase wheat from farmers to ensure benefit to them, presiding over a meeting to review the countrywide wheat procurement drive in Lahore. He said the procurement targets should be enhanced to ensure uninterrupted supply of wheat throughout the year. The Prime Minister attributed the produce of 27.5 million metric tons record bumper wheat crop in the country to the government's efforts, timely decisions, provision of quality seed, uninterrupted supply of fertilizer and kisan package. The meeting was informed about the production of wheat in the current year, its available stock and the procurement targets of the federal and the provincial departments. The Prime Minister congratulated the Minister for Food Security and other relevant authorities and appreciated their steps. He said the government is formulating a strategy for achieving enhanced production next year. Shahbaz Sharif said due to mismanagement of the previous government, Pakistan became a wheat importing country and the farmers were compelled to wait in long queues the whole day to get fertilizers. The Prime Minister also directed strict action against the hoarders. He also directed for provision of required resources through banks to get specified quantity of wheat. The Minister for Planning and Development, Ahsan Iqbal, has rejected any notion regarding constitutional and democratic crisis in the country. Talking to the media in Narawal today, he said 55% seats of the National Assembly are in the Punjab and early provincial elections will influence elections of the lower house of the country. The minister said Pakistan Tariq and Saab chief is involved in selling of party tickets for the sake of his vested interests. He said as per the constitution, the National and Provincial Assembly's elections must be held on the same day. He said legislation is the sole right of the parliament as per the spirit of the constitution. Asan Iqbal said export-led economy is the only solution for the development and prosperity of the country. He said for this purpose, the government is focusing on IT exports. The Defence Minister Khwaja Mohammad Asif has said all institutions of the country should work in their domain. Speaking at a press conference in Sialkot today, he said the judiciary has no mandate to pressure the political parties to hold talks. He said former Chief Justice is offering legal advice to the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz opponents, which is against the dignity the office he held in the past. The Defence Minister said Pakistan Tariq Insaf politically victimised Pakistan Muslim Muslim League Nawaz leadership during its four-year term and used institutions to pressurize political opponents. He said Pakistan Tariq Insaf is Pakistan Tariq Insaf selling of tickets, audio leaks should be investigated. The Minister of State for Interior Abdurrahman Khan Kanju has said has appreciated China for its 
consistent support to Pakistan in science, technology and other areas. He said this during an event titled Fantastic China, organized by the China Media Group, FM98, in collaboration with the Pakistan Science Foundation in Islamabad. The goal of the event was to draw attention towards scientific and technological cooperation between the two countries. Speaking on the occasion, the Science Commissioner of the Chinese Embassy in Pakistan, Yin Shang Shin, said China and Pakistan supported each other in difficult times. The ambassador of Kyrgyzstan to Pakistan, Ulanbek Tutiev, has expressed keen desire to fully exploit the existing trade and economic potential between the two countries and further bolster regional economic integration. Chairing a ceremony in Islamabad dedicated to the 30th anniversary of the constitution of the Kyrgyz Republic, he said deep cultural heritage of our countries should also be promoted Amongst the people of both the brotherly countries, he said the two countries are strongly interconnected and with the right approach can create a significantly efficient partnership and friendship for the benefit of the peoples of the two countries. He said both the countries are connected by strong historical links as well as the same religion and close cultural culture. This is Radio Pakistan. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the people continue to face harassment during cordon and search operations in house raids in Sirinagar and other parts of the Kashmir Valley and in the Jammu region ahead of the G20 event in the held territory. According to the Kashmir Media Service, locals informed the media persons over telephone that the Indian troops and police personnel barge into their houses at night, line up men, women and children and ask details about the young male members of the family. The locals have urged the G20 countries to not fall in the trap of the Modi regime, which in order to portray all is okay in the occupied territory has made the life of the Kashmiri people a living hell during unrelenting military operations. The troops arrested several civilians, including a religious leader in Punch and Rajori districts. There are reports that one civilian whose identity has been ascertained as a Malvi died during interrogation by the troops. In Sudan, intense deadly battle continues between the rival military factions in the capital Khartoum, which has also shattered the ceasefire aimed at allowing the people to flee to safety. Both the rival military factions have accused each other of violation of fresh ceasefire that is said to expire today. Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands wounded since a long simmering power struggle between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid su support forces erupted on the 15th of last month. The Sudanese army said today that it has destroyed the rapid support forces convoys moving towards Khartoum from the west. The United Nations Security Council has welcomed the recent visit of Saudi and Omani's delegation to the Yemeni city of Sana'a. In a statement, the United Nations Security Council members appreciated both the countries for the support to the United Nations mediation efforts in Yemen. The members said these talks represent valuable steps towards a comprehensive ceasefire and inclusive Yemeni Yemeni political talks under the auspices of the United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen. They also called on the Yemeni parties to continue dialogue and engage constructively in the peace process. The United Nations Security Council members also underlined the continued support for all efforts to formulate a polit political solution to the Yemeni crisis. The United States and South Korea have discussed the current security situation in the Korean Peninsula and bilateral cooperation. The South Korean Foreign Ministry said the American Special Representative for North Korea, Soon Kim, held a meeting with South Korean Special Representative for Korean Peninsula, Kim Shun in Seoul. It said they also discussed joint responses to North Korea's nuclear threats. In India, 11 people have died, several left unconscious following a gas leak in Ludhiana district of the Punjab state. The International Labour Day will be observed across the globe tomorrow to acknowledge and commend the invaluable contributions of the labour class. The theme for the day this year is Stop the Pandemic, Safety and Health at Work Can Save Lives. 
The fundamental objective of observing the International Labour Day is to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the working class, create awareness about their rights and protect them from exploitation. And finally, the weather report. Mainly dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain when thunderstorm is expected in Upper Sindh, East and South Punjab, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir and adjoining hilly areas. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official. Show.